Hey folks, we'll start in about a minute. If you're watching, you can uh, say hello. Hey, Dawn. <laughs> Hi. All right. Cool. So today is the last day of Knowledge is Power three day series. I actually can't believe that it's the third day and that I get to talk about uh, leaning out and weight loss. That's basically what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so the last few days we've been talking about longevity and foods that can help, um, that can help you long term, habit building that can help you long term, and all of these things are actually going to be tied in to today's talk of leaning out and losing weight, or what does it mean to have the correct body composition. Okay, so with saying that, hey Jess, um, with saying that, one question I want you to think about right now, and I want you to drop it in the chat, is why do you want to lean out or why do you want to lose weight? Okay, um, maybe not everyone has this, but uh, I know for me, I still sometimes think about that. I'm like, oh, I have this optimum like weight that I want to be at, especially for my climbing. So would love to hear kind of your thoughts on that. So while you're kind of thinking about that, um, I'm probably, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, um, mostly talking about body composition and climbers. So as a climber, you know, it's, I think it is healthy to want to lose weight for a project like that mindset. Sure. That's totally, that's one way to potentially send your projects. Um, but I think it, it does come up a lot and I feel like it's purely individual. Some folks may be able to do it well. Some folks may actually end up getting injured because of it. Um, I'm not really going to comment too much about like whether it's good or bad because I have friends who do it and I myself have done it in the past. Um, but in general, like especially in the last few years, I try to avoid doing um, like short amount like weight loss, um, mostly because you know, it, it really depends on what project I'm going to, um, how short of a time frame that I'm allowing myself to do this, um, and do I have a healthy mindset around it? Okay. So in the end, like mindset, I think is really what matters here. And yes, like climbing is a strength to weight ratio sport, um, but it doesn't mean that you have to be light. Okay, it doesn't mean you have to not weigh very much. It means that you have to be uh, strong enough and have enough fat and have that balance so that you perform your best. And each person is going to look a little different. And each climber, like basically right now in the climbing industry, we have a certain look. Like what does a climber look like? And it shouldn't just look one way. Um, and something with like the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, I think has spurred a lot of really great conversations. And, uh, you know, one that I hope that continues to come up is actually this um, notion of what a climber should look like. Um, and we tend to think of just one body type. So for me, when I think of a climber, um, I still think back to kind of like old school climbers, which is like kind of like a dirt bag bro with no shirt on, super skinny and kind of dirty. Um, like, that's totally fine if you look like that. Like, I'm not saying that that's bad. Um, but we don't have to all look like that. And we should all look very different. And I definitely don't want to look like that. I never will look like that. And I want my female friends to go out there and climb with makeup on if they want to or no makeup. Um, I want my black friends to be able to go outside and crush it and feel safe while they're doing it. So I think it's more just like, what is the face of climbing? And what is it that we're trying to really preach here as as climbers like it's not all about losing weight being small and trying to crush 
climbs. Okay, there's so much more to our sport, and that's that's why I love it because it's so dynamic, it's so different. Um, so anyway, that that's my little rant. Basically, strength to weight ratio is something that is very important to think about. Um, but what does it mean for each individual? Um, I know that some of my uh, when I was in like the end of my, like the, my late twenties, I was definitely the heaviest, um, that I was, but I also was my strongest and I sent the hardest boulders, um, during that time. So, you know, that I think had showed me that I don't need to be a certain body type or body weight to be able to send. <clears throat> All right. So hopefully you've kind of thought about why would you want to either lose weight or, you know, <clears throat> potentially change your strength to weight ratio. And it really, when you think about that, like, what is your why? Like, and is this why enough? Is it good enough to be able to create change? So let's see. Yeah, Jess, it's vulnerable to talk about weight loss. It makes activities feel easier. Yeah, climbing, running, pull-ups for sure. It does. Yeah. And that's why I'm not saying it's a bad thing. And if you feel like you need to do that, that's totally fine. And today, you know, mostly I want to talk about some healthier ways of achieving those, uh, like end possibilities. Um, so, you know, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm also not saying that some, like the ways that we do it is necessarily good either. So for me, some of my answers to the the question of why would I want to lose weight? So I want to get lean because I want to send harder. I also want to look better. And I also, you know, deep down, I think that people will actually like me because I would look a certain way. So these are some like deeper answers that I have found for myself of the why. And all of these reasons are fine. Like your reason is going to be your reason. Um, but I do encourage you to try to like dig deeper into your why. It is going to make your journey into, you know, weight loss or changing your strength to weight ratio, your body composition, um, a lot more manageable because you can always come back to that why and connect with it. So in my nutrition course, we're actually going to be doing a lot of activities around identifying, identifying your why and it's going to be with you throughout the whole course. All right. So first I want to talk about a few statistics on body composition first. So what is healthy um, body fat for m biological male and females? So for men, ideally it's between nine and 15%. This would be considered healthy. Okay. So it's a, actually a pretty big range. And for women, it's 19 to 25% body fat. And then what are some of the best ways to um, measure weight loss or weight gain? Okay, so if you're changing your body composition, what are some of the best ways to measure this? And the first one really should be how your clothing fits. You know, this is, um, I think, like, for especially when I coach women, this is like one of the things that we talk about, like, oh, I want to be able to fit into this pair of jeans that I had when I was like in my 20s, or I want to be able to keep the same clothing fit for the rest of my life. Okay, um, taking photos, so clothing fit, taking photos regularly, maybe every two weeks and comparing the photos. That's a great way to see where your progress is. Circumference measures, so that means you're measuring um, body parts, so like your bicep, your chest, your hips, your waist, um, your legs. So that's really great. So those three. Um, and then the least, my least favorite is actually weighing yourself because all too often we put so much value on the number and the number actually doesn't tell us very much about what is happening. All it's saying is, oh, you're up or you're down um, with with clothing fit, taking photos, and using circumference measurements can really tell us a lot more about what we're doing and if it's if we're doing the right thing or not. Okay, so it can actually guide us much better than just taking our body weight every day. 
All right, Dawn, um, our body fat recommendations, the same for menopausal women who are not concerned about menstruation. Uh, I think it comes down to still like hormonal balance. And like in general, I think women need to have a little bit more fat on them. Um, but that's a really great, great question. And I wouldn't mind actually looking into that. So I actually don't know the answer to that question. It's a great question. Um, yeah, I would say that's probably okay to be a little bit lower than 16% um, as a menopausal woman. Yeah. Okay, hormonal balance. Yeah. Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa. Thank you for answering this question. This is great. I'm going to open this up. I would like to, I like my pants to fit better. I put an extra five pounds with each kid. Okay, you have three kids. And while I always say losing a few extra pounds will help me climb better, I get around that by working harder on my technique. So I don't think that the mo motivation is actually there. Yeah, and you know, like we can always go a little bit further about like, so losing the extra few pounds you know, like what you could ask yourself, like if, if you do lose those extra pounds, what is that going to benefit you? How is that going to benefit you? And then what are some of the trade-offs? So that could be another question to ask. And I think the way that you've gotten around that, which is working on your technique, I think this is fantastic. Um, especially if you're actually totally okay with, with your body, but it sounds like you want your clothes to fit better. Um, and you know, I think you can absolutely, get that goal, but the why does have to be pretty deep and connected to you. Thank you for sharing that. All right. All right. So when it comes to performance, so let's say as climbers, like what's the true goal of weight loss? Is it purely just to lose weight or should it be to actually gain muscle and losing body fat. And I personally believe that for performance and longevity, keeping muscle on your body for as long as you can through your aging process is really important because you're gonna be able to perform almost in any activity that you do. Um, it can also help with quality of life if you're able to stay strong as long as possible. So I think this balance of increasing muscle mass is like, I think, First, increasing muscle mass is really important no matter what um, your body fat is. And then if you wanna lose weight, we wanna try to target the fat rather than losing muscle and losing the fat at the same time. So cutting calories. So I'm gonna go over just like three different ways that you could lose weight, which is the first one that we think about is actually cutting calories. So what happens is if, you, if you're cutting calories, so most people tend to start with around 500 calorie deficit a day. And what normally happens is like, yes, you're gonna lose weight, but the weight tends to come off from muscle. Um, and so it's muscle and we tend to get dehydrated. So the muscle and, and the fat cells will also like, the, the water will come out. Generally weight loss is um, water loss through through the processes anyway. So water weight to me is kind of like a weird uh, concept because that's basically what we're losing. Um, however, it's this, uh, the water weight that tends to come and go very easily. That's, that's kind of the water weight that I'm talking about. And so like generally it's dehydration. So cutting calories generally makes us lose muscle mass. So we're not actually gaining uh, lean body mass, we're losing the lean body mass. You will lose uh, fat as well if you're cutting calories, but you're also getting dehydrated, okay? So with this approach, the, like, the benefits are, yes, I'm losing weight, however, it affects performance the most, and it could actually lead to like an increased injury rate because we're losing muscle mass and we don't uh, maybe have enough protein in our diet. So the next one would be cutting carbohydrate. I think this is one where, uh, it, you know, right now this is kind of like a hot topic. A lot of people are talking about cu cutting carbohydrates. We have like the keto diet. Um, 
And so there have been some studies and sure, like, again, it comes down to the individual, but if you're cutting carbs, you are going to see a decrease in fat for sure. Like that's a great thing that comes out of um, um, a higher fat diet is that yes, you're starting to, your body learns to burn fat. So you're going to lose fat, but you're also going to lose muscle mass. So when it comes to performance, this could also be an issue. Um, the other things about cutting carbs is that you will like that first week or two really have a hard time with exercise because, uh, all of the glycogen is coming out of your muscle. So there is like, w like one significant drawback. So you might have to scale your workouts based on how much carbohydrate you're having. Okay. So, and the last one would be a low fat diet. So if you have low fat, that means you will have higher carbohydrate. So with this type of dieting, you still see a decrease in fat, but not as much as if you were to do a higher fat diet. However, what they've seen in research is that you don't lose hardly any muscle mass. So with eating carbohydrate, it actually, it's called protein sparing. Um, so, you know, like it actually keeps your muscles from degrading over time. Even if you're cutting your calories, you're, if you're keeping your uh, carbohydrate intake relatively high and you know like I can go much deeper into that um, in the course but you know like it's probably around 50 to 60 percent carbohydrate um, you're able to maintain your muscle mass but again I will say that it is individual um, I'm not sure if any of you have had experience in any of these categories if you have you know feel free to talk about your experience um, I have done basically all three of these, and definitely the one that works best for me is a low-fat diet. Um, the high-fat diet, I actually lost weight really quickly, um, but I had a layer of fat that, like, it was kind of weird. It's like I was kind of, like, I looked shredded, but not really. It was like I had this layer of fat on me that was, like, kind of weird, um, and it was really hard for me to gain um, muscle, like, like my strength numbers weren't going up as quickly as I would when I was uh, on higher carbs. All right, Dawn, does one need to lose weight to climb better or is there another way to accomplish this? Yeah, so that's, that is the question. Like that, that is kind of like what I'm trying to advocate here is like uh, working more on your strength to weight ratio. So you've got your strength and your weight that you can um, like work on. So you can either try to get stronger or you can try to lose weight or you can kind of do a little bit of both. And I think strength in general, you can continue to get stronger as you age one, because it's neurological. So you can continue to get stronger and stronger as you age. Um, and especially if you're working on technique, like Alyssa, you know, like, that technique is going to stay with you and the better and better you get the better climber you're going to be the weight loss that is not going to your weight is going to fluctuate throughout your whole life whether you really like it or not it's going to change so i think like losing weight is not something that we should really like hold on to you know we can be more consistent in our climbing if we're strong and if we've got good technique great question Okay, Don, another good question. How often should we check our body fat? So um, if you're on a diet, so if you're trying to change your body composition, I would say change, like checking it every two weeks because every two weeks, you know, like you'll be able to see at least some change in your body. And that change could either be in the right direction or the wrong direction. Um, I think doing it any less than that could actually be a little bit mentally draining if we don't see any changes. So two weeks is like a pretty good um, time frame to check whether our body fat is changing or not. Um, ways of checking your body fat. Uh, so a, an easy way is circumference. So you would do your circumference measurements plus your body weight. And there's some calculators online to do that or you can do a caliper test and you can get a caliper for $2 um, off Amazon. But the caveat is that you have to have the same person test your, um, your caliper sites every time. So it, 
really like you have to be consistent with that in order to get consistent results. Great question. Some other ways that we generally tend to control extra, so what we call external factors, so that would be like weighing yourself, um, are like the counting calories and following rules. So these rules tend to give us kind of like a negative mindset about certain foods. And it actually can lead us to what's called or anorexia, which is uh, kind of like this, this thought that, um, like eating healthy is superior, uh, something like that. So it's like, it's almost like you have a superiority uh, issue with food. And that's not what we want either. We want to have a very healthy way of looking at food. So, you know, trying not to like really adhere to any rules is really important. Um, like trying to hit standards, like some, some, you know, folks try to like hit certain standards, especially like I see that in strength training a lot. Um, while you might be able to hit the standard, if you don't, how does that make you feel? All right, so these are some things that could work, but doesn't work for everybody. All right, so what does being lean mean to you? Um, so to me, when I think of being lean, I think of um, having a significant amount of muscle mass and not having a ton of body fat. Okay, so shredded could be another way of saying it, or shredded could be like one more step after leaning out. Um, so this is important to you. So if you're thinking about like, oh, I want to be lean, I want you to think about what that means for you. Like what, what would your body look like? Okay, and it kind of has to be somewhat like realistic. Is it, is it feasible for you to have whatever body that you want. So we're about to go into that. So what does it look like to have uh, less body fat? And what is it going to take? So getting lean takes a lot of hard work, but it doesn't have to be painful. So with counting calories, that can be super painful, especially if you're doing like 500 calorie deficit or even 800 calorie deficit, that can be super painful. Um, and it's really hard to adhere to. Ideally, it's small changes over time that will basically end in a lifelong change of like a perfect balance of strength to weight ratio for you. So with losing, if you want to get lean, you kind of have to be in it for the long haul. And the goal is to not make the method painful. So when we think of leanness, at least when I think of leanness, I think of like physique models or models in magazines and like fitness magazines, and they're just like ripped with like the six pack abs. Um, but what we don't know behind the scenes is all of the things that they have to go through in order to, to get that body. And normally they have to do quite a bit, a lot of them uh, will dehydrate themselves. A lot of them will have to really cut carbohydrate out like a week before their photo shoot. Um, and then, then, so they, they get to the photo shoot and then on top of that, um, Photoshop is done. So just imagine all of that. And that's not really what we are looking for. Like, and if that's the kind of body that you're, you're wanting, just know that you do have to put a lot of work into it. So what does it take? Yeah, that's right, Don, Photoshopping. Yep. Um, so if you're, let's say you're at like, as a female, maybe you're sitting at 25% body fat. So you're right on the cusp of like healthy and unhealthy. Um, you know, if you're looking to decrease this, you know, the, the things that you're going to have to do are, um, actually, so if you're sitting at that percentage, it's actually like, the question would be, am I willing to now decrease that? And if you don't, some of the benefits of like not moving from there is like, actually, like, you don't have to think too much about your food choices. Um, 
you know, you can just continue on with your days. Um, however, the, the cost of that is you're um, potentially going to run into some health issues. Um, potentially, like your energy levels are not quite there. Um, and you have risk of metabolic syndrome. But that's generally metabolic syndrome is like higher than 25%. So anything like 26 to 30 um, and then 30 beyond is going to be more of like metabolic syndrome. So if you want to come down below 25%, um, the benefits of that is going to be you're likely going to have a lot more energy. You're going to have much better sleep. Um, exercise is generally like at this stage, like very enjoyable and it's like kind of easy and it's fun. Um, the cost of getting a little bit lower than that would be uh, that you would have to do just a little bit of meal planning um, and you would have to like schedule out some of your exercise times. So, and you might also like feel like you look pretty good, but maybe you're not like feeling like you're lean. So then as you get lower and lower in body fat, the more energy you're actually going to have, um, the less medications you're going to need as you age and the better you feel and the less cravings you will have. Like this for sure has been a big one for me. Um, and so as you start to decrease body fat over the long haul, you will actually have like in order to get there, you probably would have built some really good um, habits to get there so that it's easier to maintain this body percent fat. OK, um, generally, like if you lose weight really quick, you're going to put that weight back on. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But at this stage, we do want it to be relatively easy, easy to maintain that body fat percentage. So the trade-offs would be uh, that you would have to do more planning around your meals. Um, you probably have to sacrifice a little bit around your social situations. Um, and you'll have to dedicate a little bit more time to exercise or movement. Uh, oh, you'll also have to likely uh, focus a little bit more on recovery. Um, as we talked about yesterday with longevity, with more training comes more recovery strategies. So as you get leaner and leaner, so now you're starting to come down. So as a woman, as you're getting closer and closer to like 20, 19, 18, 17%, the more planning you're going to have to do and uh, the more social situations tend to get a little bit more awkward. Um, however, you can, like as your body changes, likely the way that you interact with people is going to also be a little different. It you know, like when, when you connect with your why, generally that means that your values are there and those values can change over time. And if those values don't always align with the people that you're around, sometimes we tend to get, um, we become friends with other people who have the similar values. So that's something to consider that sometimes it can change who you spend time with as well. So if your goal is to lose weight, um, it becomes something that you actually end up thinking about a lot more often. And you think about what foods you're eating, how much you weigh, uh, when your next workout is. Um, and so generally this is if you're really trying to go for it pretty hard. Um, and maybe you're avoiding desserts, processed foods, alcohol, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Other things that could happen, so if you uh, if you go on kind of like a pretty sig like significant cutting diet, um, some of the things that you could see, so I've seen this in keto um, and low calorie diets, is that sex drive tends to decrease, so that's a real thing. Um, your hormone balance, even if you're not below a certain body fat percentage, if you cut a lot of calories, especially for women, this can affect your menstrual cycle. All right. So that's something to really be aware of. Um, you could also feel super wired and anxious. Like I, you know, like high heart rate could also be an issue, especially when you're going to bed and you just like feel your heart just pounding. Um, so these are all things that are the cost of trying to get super lean really quickly. Jess, 
There's not a Photoshop section of my nutrition course? No. <laughs> oh, but it would be really interesting to uh, experiment with what it would be like to uh, prepare for a photo shoot. It might be pretty interesting. Oh, Don, I missed this question. Are scales with body fat calculations accurate? Um, so the, I think you're talking about those scales with the electrical impedance, bioimpedance, and they are not super accurate. However, if you always measure on the same scale at the same time of day, they can be actually quite accurate. As long as it's repeatable, then you're good to go. So it would be one thing to go from one scale to a different scale to a different one because you're gonna get numbers all over the place. And measuring at different times of day is really gonna matter because of the amount of water in your body. So because it sends an electrical signal through your body, water, the amount of water in your body will affect uh, the outcome of the number. All right, let's talk about real quick crash diets and other 30 day challenges. <laughs> so I just got done with a sugar free 30 day challenge and I will talk about that in a second. So crash diets work in a way that the number on the scale like tends to drop. So we know that crash diets we're going to we are probably likely going to see the number on the scale drop, okay? However, what happens when you're done with the diet? What are the effects of this, okay? So like, let's say you've just gone through a crash diet. Who knows how long you went through it for? Maybe a month, maybe six weeks. Um, maybe, yeah, you've lost a lot of weight. What kind of weight did you lose? Um, how, how are your energy levels? And then what are your plans from coming out of this diet? So generally what happens, and this has happened to me every time I have tried some sort of crazy diet is a rebound. And rebounds are often like, you know, if you don't plan ahead, it's going to hit you really hard. And we've heard this, maybe you haven't, but uh, you come in at a certain weight, you drop the weight, and then when you're done with the whatever diet, you actually put the weight back on plus some. So now you have just reversed the things that you wanted to do. The one thing that I actually noticed from the, my last attempt at keto was actually, I felt like my metabolism had slowed way down. Um, and I, you know, I didn't, I haven't talked to any of my friends who do keto on a regular basis and maybe they have better insight for me on maybe what's happening here. But I did feel like I screwed up my metabolism a little bit and it was for a good couple months that I had to, I just like introduced carbohydrate back in and tried to like balance my macros as best as I could, um, actually using like calculators so that my uh, metabolism could come back online. So there are some issues with doing crash diets, especially if you try one, like one every six months or something, it could really affect your metabolism. And I know I'm not the only one, like I've heard this from several other people that their metabolism gets a little bit out of whack when trying things like this. So it doesn't mean that I don't think you should experiment. I think that the, the amount of time that you experiment should be pretty short. You can learn a lot about the foods that you're eating or like uh, elimination foods um, pretty quickly. Within a couple weeks, you'll know whether it's working for you or not. And I don't think that that is um, enough time to really like screw up your metabolism. So, you know, in general, I do think that they're good because, again, I like experimentation, um, but the mindset also needs to be right. And so if you enter into any of these uh, diets with a mind of, like, curiosity, um, you'll probably get a lot more out of it. So normally if you're going into a crash diet, what, what are you going to get out of it except for losing weight and then gaining it back? Hopefully through any process that you're doing in dieting, that you're learning something about yourself through that process. And I'd rather see challenges where you're actually 
adding things in rather than taking something out. Or if you take something out, then you really need to think about adding something in. So I just came out of doing this 30 day sugar free challenge. And, you know, I wanted to make sure for myself that like I know about myself that if I deprive myself of something, I am going to want to hit that hard when the time is up. Um, but it didn't happen this time because I made a conscious effort to really put a lot of really good things into my diet. So Brenda and I went to the grocery store and really made a good plan of like foods that we wanted to eat, how we wanted to eat. Um, and it ended up being really great and we're still continuing on. Um, and I think it's because we both kind of like planned around it and we had a really healthy mindset. We were very curious about the things that we were experiencing during the 30 day challenge. Um, and you know, on, on my social media, I really hope that I had, uh, you know, communicated that it's important to add really good foods into your diet if you're taking something out. So keep that in mind, like dep deprivation is not great on the mind because the mind will rebel. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of like we're wired to go back into survival mode. So we're like, oh, I have something missing. I need to refill as soon as possible. Um, so that's just something to think about. So what are some healthy ways of getting lean? Oh, I have some questions here. Um, Don, you wondered about the scales you can have at home. I think there's, um, Withings. Withings has a pretty good one. Um, there's some other good ones out there, but you know, off the top of my head, I don't know the, the names of them. Um, and then isn't the idea of sugar-free period to abolish addiction? So yes, um, it can be the, I think it's more what I was trying to get out of it and what I wanted people to get out of it was like, how do you feel when you don't have sugar, processed sugar in your food every day? Um, like, yes, there, the sugar does have an addictive uh, component to it, but I didn't want that to be the thing that people latched onto because I think that addiction is not a positive mindset. It's like, okay, sugar is bad. And I don't know if I really like, I don't really like to call foods good or bad. So calling sugar that it's like an addiction while I know that for myself and science shows that it is an addictive food. Um, that wasn't kind of like the reason why I wanted to do it. It was more like, let's see how I feel on this. Let's see how others feel. How does it change your life by not having processed sugar in your diet anymore. And I think people got a lot more out of it by approaching it with more curiosity than, okay, like I'm, I'm taking a bad food out of my diet. It's a great question. Thank you, Dawn. All right. So what are some healthy ways of getting lean look like? So number one, so going back to day one of knowledge is power is slowing down. So your habits, your daily habits that are manageable and repeatable and don't mess up your social life. I think these are the things that can help you get the body you want. It is going to take a lot longer. Um, it's not a quick fix method. You know, like with my nutrition course, I feel like, you know, like my marketing, I'm like, Oh my God, how am I going to sell this to people? Because it's not a quick fix. It is literally going to take you, um, you know, a long time to develop these really good habits. However, when those habits fully kick in, it really does change your life in a way that you wouldn't really even imagine. Um, you know, so I think that this approach is so much more, um, just more positive for the brain and, and your life in general, because it can spill over into so many other things in your life. So yeah. Okay. So you, you'll be able to, if you develop these habits, you'll be able to continue with your hobbies or activities without having to sacrifice too much. And the leaner that you get, yes, the more changes that you're going to have to make to your behaviors. 
So if you want to get leaner and leaner, the more behavior changes you have to make. All right, so that is kind of the sacrifice. But if you do it over a long period of time, you allow your mind to change with you over time. So, okay, so my next question is, when you lose weight, how long, or when you're trying to lean out, how long do you wanna be lean for? So I'm assuming that if you're trying to lose weight, that you're actually trying to do it for your lifetime, that you wanna be at a certain weight or a certain strength to weight ratio or a certain body for, uh, fat percentage for as long as you can. But what generally happens is that with crash diets, we get to the certain point, maybe it's not quite where we want it to be, but we've made really good progress. However, that doesn't last very long. Like maybe it lasts us a couple months and then all of a sudden something happens, another holiday comes around and then more things happen and then we've like added that weight back on and that we weren't really planning for. So that's kind of like the focus of my course is building habits so that anytime that you're faced with a like a uh, not really a problem, but a situation where you're like, oh, here are all of like the foods that are in front of me. For example, like Thanksgiving, if you have really good habits ingrained, you won't have to worry about those situations. You just fall back on your habits. It doesn't mean that you won't be eating those things. You will likely be enjoying a lot of those foods, but you'll be able to do it in moderation. You'll be able to do it slowly. Um, you will be able to do it like eat to 80% full. you will be able to have a balanced diet just because it's now an automatic. It's on automatic. What happens is when you do work more with your habits and behavior change, you develop what we call like internal cues of like your, your felt sense. It's like you, you just become more in tune with your body and it might sound a little like, I don't know, woo woo, but um, it's not at all. This is how most athletes, like long-term recreational athletes and folks who are really dedicated to their fitness, they rely on their habits that they've built for years and years, not because they just crash diet every week and uh, they're sacrificing a lot. Like generally they're not. They have chosen to be a certain way and they've built their life around that and they have their behavior set in a certain way. Right. So in the end, like what will get you lean? Okay. So like if you're, if you eat less than you expend, you're going to lose weight. Okay. That's, that's just mathematics. It, there's a lot more to that, but that is the first concept. Uh, developing eating, exercise, and strength uh, stress management habits that are sustainable long-term and making sure that you can plan for, so if you do want to go on some sort of like weight loss diet, that you plan beforehand and plan for afterward. What are you going to do in order to enter into this diet? Making sure that you have your situation set up so that your family, your friends, they all know that you're doing it so that they don't come to your house with a big fruit pie and then you're like, oh, what am I supposed to do? Okay, so like have your support system and then have a plan for after you're done with it because the last thing you want to do is put all of that weight back on. Right. So that is basically my spiel today. And really your homework today is really just like the question of... Like what really drives you to want to lose weight? I want you to connect with your why. Um, what good things will come from this? So if you have this vision of um, your body to look a certain way and a and for it to feel a certain way, I think the feeling is really what what um, you should connect with as well. Um, what are some good things that are kind of come out of it? And then on the flip side, what sacrifices are you going to have to make in order to get the body that you want? So if you have a strong connection to your why, it's going to help you get through those tough days. Cool. So do we have any other questions?
Oh, thanks, Don. Oh, I appreciate that. Okay, Don, so you don't know how to get more lean rather than increase strength. Yeah, so um, increasing muscle mass. I think that's the kind of like the key. Um, but again, like the question is like, what, what do you want? Like, do you need it? Do you actually need that? Maybe you don't. So that is, that is the, the question, you know, like we, in society, I think we are like forced to look a certain way. And, you know, like I, I would highly question that, you know, it's like, what, how do you want to feel? I think that's, that's more the question. How do you want to feel? Ooh, what's a healthy percent body fat to lose over a certain period of time? I think that if you're mainly just losing body fat and not losing um, muscle mass, uh, I think you're going to actually be okay if it's like fairly rapid, like a lot of um, body fat over a sing like a short amount of time. So I know people who have lost, and it also depends on what your baseline is. So if you're already like at like 20% body fat, then maybe like uh, losing like 1% every couple weeks is probably uh, pretty good. Does the 1% to 3% feel crash diety to you or healthy? It depends on like the time frame. So I think 1% to 3%. So if you're starting at 20 and you're trying to get to 17, like you're already like, at 20%, you're already like very healthy person. So um, I'm just making up this number, by the way, I'm, I'm just like throwing it out there. Um, so if you're trying to get to 17, 17% body fat is like pretty lean. Um, you know, I would say, theoretically, like that would probably take, you know, six months, at least, you know, for it to be healthy. And yeah, if you're doing it within just a couple months, it, it might feel a little crash diety, as you say. Yeah, it could be, it could be really hard to come out of it once you're done. Um, you'd have to be exercising quite a bit. If you're at 30% body weight and you lose one to 3% within like three to six months, like that would not be crash diety and that would actually be very manageable. Um, because you're not at a very low body fat percentage. So it really just depends. Like the, the closer and closer you get to that 16%, the harder, the harder and longer it is to take to get that body fat off. But yeah, that's a good question. And again, it's like, just focus, try to like really get more like body fat. Like that's what you want to target is the body fat and not the muscle mass. Great question. Any other questions? I've had so much fun with y'all. Thank you so much for listening to me. Can you correlate body fat with performance? Um, in climbing? You know... I don't have the stats on that, <laughs> but yes, I, I think there are a lot of studies that are with like runners. I think runners there, they've done a lot of studies with endurance athletes and body fat percentages. Um, and th there is a sweet spot. And sometimes, uh, again, it comes down to the individual, but with, I think runners, like the leaner you are, the easier it's going to be to perform. Um, you know, so yeah, I think for, for me, uh, I can maybe just give you an, like an anecdote from like my own experience. Like I was 117 pounds at some point, which is very light. So I'm five, seven. Um, I had lost a lot of weight due to like some trauma and 
I climbed really well, but I had no energy. So like while I was, I saw some really great benefits, my life was not great. So I, I don't know. I think I was like 117 and probably like, it was like, 14% body fat, something like that. I had lost my period and it was not great. Hey, Mary Gilly. Hi. <laughs> when I think about my why, I automatically think of reasons that are related with what's a healthy physique. There are other reasons that I can think of that are beyond that. But I'm wondering when you say, think about the why, can you shift your mindset beyond the initial thinking? Yes. So there's a, there's a, so in my book, Peak Nutrition, it's like one of the first activities to do when you're trying to come up with your goals. And it's called the five whys. And so like, if I ask you, why do you want to lose weight? And your first response will be, well, I want to perform better. I want to like climb harder. Like, okay, why do you want to climb harder? then your response might be because I'm going to, you know, it's a goal of mine. I feel like I'm going to like feel really good about myself if I can climb harder. Okay, great. Why do you want to feel good about yourself climbing? Then maybe your response would be, well, because that's going to increase my confidence as a person. Great. Then I'm going to ask you again, why do you want to increase confidence? Like, what is it about that? that drives you and you're like, well, I think mostly in my life, uh, I feel like I need more meaning in my life and I want to have better friendships and relationships. So like maybe that is actually the core why. So that could, that could actually be your why. So you have to ask yourself a couple times why you want a specific goal. And it all boils down to something very deep. And this deep connection is what I'm talking about. Um, I'm trying to think of one of my deep whys that I came up with. I think for me, like my, my biggest thing was um, feeling valued. That was like one of my big, like deep connections. I'm like, I want to feel valued. Like why, and like, why is that important? You know, I want to feel really good about myself. So, you know, that, that is so deep and it's like very emotional and like, these are the things that we need to work on. Not necessarily like, oh, I just want to climb better. Like, yes, those are all side effects of connecting with your deep why. So I hope that helps. Hey, PA. Oh my gosh, you're here. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, so I will drop the question for your homework. So it's not a, it's not going to be a download today. So just a question that I want you to think about, um, and think about the sacrifices and the benefits of getting lean, like connect with your why and think about those things. And is it worth it? Uh, and it, it might be, it very well might be. Um, and there's never, there should never be any shame in wanting to look a certain way. But I think you need to question why you want to look a certain way. All right, really enjoyed this. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you listening to me and showing up for all three days. And hopefully I'll see you in my nutrition course. It does start August 31st. If you want more information, and if you want to get on a call with me and talk about this, I know that I have an application that I've had a, a several people like fill out now that they're on board. Um, I think Jess, Jess is on board. She's going to take the, the course. I'm so stoked because Jess is like so freaking awesome. Um, so she's going to be doing it with me um, and some other folks. So like the application might feel a little overwhelming for you. And if you don't want to do that process, just send me a message on Instagram. Um, or on Facebook Messenger, just like 
do a direct message and I can get on a call with you to talk you through what the course looks like more in depth if that is something you want to do, okay? Um, I would love to have you in my course because it is going to be super transformational and great for you long term. I like, I promise that. All right. Okay, everyone. Thank you. Love you. We'll talk soon.